Okay, in this video we're going to talk about precipitation reactions. So I wanted to start out looking back at the, uh, the two types of double replacement reactions. It's either going to be acid-base or it's going to be precipitation. So we're going to focus here on this type. All right. So to begin, we're going to look at two reactions here. Okay, they look pretty similar. First one you have potassium chloride reacting with silver nitrate to form potassium nitrate and silver chloride. Okay, looks like your your run-of-the-mill double replacement reaction there. So the second one, very similar, you have potassium chloride reacting with sodium nitrate to form potassium nitrate and sodium chloride. Okay, the thing is, only one of these reactions will happen. So think about it for a minute. If we've already been through the class, then you probably should know this by now. But which of these reactions is going to occur? Okay, as it turns out, the first one will occur. I'm going to check here. The second one will not occur. Okay, so we're going to write, instead of writing it out, you're just going to write no reaction. That will not happen. So let's, let's look at the difference here. They're really, really similar. In fact, the only thing we changed is that, right? And then same thing over here. That's all we changed. So why would the first one happen and the second one not? All right. Well, as it turns out, the other difference you might notice is this right here. Okay. In the second reaction, everything's aqueous, dissolved in solution. The first reaction produces a solid product. So that, that's the big difference there. And that solid product, okay, I'm going to label it up here. Solid product is called the precipitate. All right, and a precipitate is just a solid product that comes out of the solution, right? Comes out of the solution, becomes a solid whenever you do a double replacement reaction. So silver chloride is a precipitate here. There is no precipitate in the second reaction. All right. So that's the difference. The first one performed. The first one formed a precipitate. The second one did not. So, as it turns out, and I'm going to type this here. Precipitation is the let's call it driving force behind these reactions. So if, if you have a double replacement reaction, if it's not an acid and a base reacting, the only way it's going to happen is if it makes it precipitate, period. Okay? So if it's not an acid and a base in a double replacement, then it's got to be precipitation or it ain't going to happen. Like this one here. No precipitate formed, not going to happen. All right? So let's look at, a, let's look at some solubility type stuff. So that's all good and all, and we can we can look at these two reactions and tell which one's going to happen is is or is not going to happen. But what if I were to give you something like this? Let's say we have magnesium sulfate and uh, sodium nitrate. Okay. What if I just give you these two reactions and I say, is it going to happen? Yes or no? Well, previously, we looked up here at the products, and we used the product to tell us, yeah, it's going to happen because it made a solid product. And down here, we said, no, there is no solid product. Not going to happen. Well, in the one I just gave you, we don't know the products. So how do we know if it's going to happen? Well, there's something called solubility. Okay. Solubility, if I can get my text box here. Solubility is just the ability of a substance to dissolve in water. Okay, so given that, and let's say soluble can or will dissolve, insoluble, can't or 
won't dissolve. So given that, there's a really handy thing called solubility rules. Okay? This is kind of your go-to, your little cheat sheet, to tell you whether or not something will be a precipitate. So let's look back at the reactions before. For the first one, we made potassium nitrate and silver chloride. Okay, let's look, so let's look at potassium nitrate first. Is that soluble or insoluble in water? So if we look at our chart, we see, let's go down, we find nitrate here. So we're going to look in this row. Nitrate is soluble. So any nitrates are soluble, which means they dissolve in water. Um, and there's no exception, so there's no exception, so that means potassium nitrate will dissolve in water, which is why we say it's aqueous. Okay, so potassium nitrate is aqueous. The other one we just talked about was silver chloride. So let's find chloride. Okay, there it is. So if we go over, looks like chloride compounds are also soluble. So normally chloride compounds will dissolve. Okay, if we look at the exceptions, silver is an exception. So that means silver chloride is an exception to the rule. The rule is soluble, it's an exception, so that means silver chloride is insoluble. Okay, insoluble means it doesn't dissolve. If it doesn't dissolve, that means it will form a precipitate. So it's that simple. If it's, if it's soluble in water, it's going to be aqueous. If it's insoluble, it's going to be a precipitate. So basically what we're, what we're looking at here is the reaction is not going to happen unless it makes an insoluble compound. It's got to make a compound that won't dissolve in order for the precipitation reaction to happen. So now let's look at the one I just gave you, magnesium sulfate and sodium nitrate. Now let's, let's look at it again and try to figure out, is it going to happen? Okay, let's get rid of this question mark because now we know how to figure it out. So let's go ahead and go through the double replacement. We're going to have magnesium nitrate, okay, two plus and a one minus. So it's going to be like that, magnesium nitrate, okay. Oh, I was going to put a face symbol, but we don't know those yet. And sodium sulfate. So magnesium nitrate and sodium sulfate. So let's, let's refer to our solubility rules to figure out, is the reaction going to happen? So let's look at magnesium nitrate first. All right, we're going to find nitrates. Here we go. They are soluble. All nitrates dissolve in water, and there are no exceptions. So potassium nitrate, we can now say is, whoa, let me go down. Potassium nitrate, I mean magnesium, I'm sorry, aqueous. So now let's look at sodium sulfate. So sulfates, here we are, are soluble. And sodium is not an exception. So that means sodium sulfate should also be soluble. So we go down here and put boards going out over here. Okay, because so sodium sulfate is going to be aqueous. So what that means is, if this reaction produces two aqueous products, it will not happen. No reaction will occur there. No reaction will occur there. So let's try a couple more of these. Um, I'm going to give you, and if you don't have these solubility rules, you can look them up. I've got some paper copies, but they're easily available on the internet. General solubility rules. So, um, let's let's try a few examples. Let's do 
sodium hydroxide reacting with iron chloride. Okay, let's try lithium bromide reacting with aluminum nitrate. And let's try um, lead nitrate, lead 2 nitrate, and sodium iodide. All right. So go ahead and give those a try. Predict the products, um, balance the equation, and make sure is the reaction going to happen. It'll save you a lot of work if you can just find out at the beginning. Not going to happen because it's two aqueous products. Okay, pause it and then come back and look at the solutions. Okay, first one sodium hydroxide and iron chloride. I'm going to go through this quickly for the sake of time. You're going to get sodium chloride and iron. Oh, man. Iron. Hydroxide, we're just going to go FeOH. Uh, turns out sodium chloride, salt dissolves in water, we know that. Iron hydroxide, if you look at our chart, hydroxide is here, hydroxides are insoluble, and iron is no exception. So iron hydroxide should come out of the solution. So we can say oh, let me go down here. Iron hydroxide is going to be a solid. So this reaction is going to happen. It made it precipitate. Okay, and let me balance this too before I forget. All right. There we go. Oh, you know what? Should be iron three hydroxide as well. Since we started out with iron three chloride. Okay. Next one: lithium bromide and aluminum nitrate. So double replacement. We're going to get lithium nitrate and aluminum bromide. So let's look at our rules here. Nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. So lithium nitrate is going to be dissolved. The other one was aluminum bromide. Bromides, soluble, and aluminum is no exception. So they'll both dissolve. Okay, so we can say aluminum bromide and lithium nitrate. That's not going to happen. They're both going to be aqueous. So no reaction there. No. No reaction. Easy enough. You know. All right. Last one. Lead nitrate. Lead two nitrate and sodium iodide. So if we predict products, we're, we should get sodium nitrate and lead to iodide. So let's, let's look at these and see if they're soluble. So nitrates, again we've seen this a few times, all nitrates are soluble. We're all going to dissolve. So sodium nitrate will dissolve. It will be aqueous. Lead to iodide. Okay, Iodides normally soluble, just like other halogens. However, lead is one of the two exceptions. So that means if iodides are normally solu soluble and lead is an exception, lead iodide will not dissolve. So that's going to be solid, whereas that's just going to be aqueous. 
So this reaction will happen because it made a precipitate. And in fact, that led to iodide precipitate is a reaction we've seen in class. It's the one that made the, the mustard yellow looking thing. Pretty bright. It's a cool reaction. So that one will happen. All right, that's that's about it for solubility. If you want more practice, you can come before or after school. Um, but I hope that made sense. It's kind of a, a basic overview of everything there.